The Wood Whisperer is brought to you by Powermatic, the gold standard since 1921. And by Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. Create with confidence. Well, right now I'm in the middle of a project for a client and it's a pretty fun one. Uh, part of the reason is the client himself. It's someone who really appreciates good quality hardwoods and good craftsmanship. And uh, one of the most important features of any of my projects that I've ever made for him, uh, in, in his words, is me signing it, which makes me feel kind of good. That's like, really the kind of customer you want. So this project is really cool and I wish I could show you guys everything from start to finish, but I'm under the gun, got a little bit of a time crunch here. But there is one aspect to this project that I thought would be really cool to share with you, and that involves the doors. The doors are basically going to be made from six panels. Each door has three panels. And the panels themselves We'll have a bird's eye maple uh, background. The actual, as it starts to raise up, will be bird's eye maple. And right in front of it, like sort of at the very tippity top of the raised panel, is going to be walnut. So I had to think about how I would approach this, and I've never really made a raised panel made out of two different woods like this, but it was compelling. I thought it was interesting, so this is one approach that I think is going to work. So I have a, a strip of walnut up here, which is oversized. The, uh, the maple itself is exactly the size of the panel that I want. So what I'm hoping is with this little thin strip of walnut at the top, my goal is to hit it with a raised panel bit and sort of expose the, uh, the bird's eye maple that's under here so that eventually we'll have a nice ring of bird's eye maple with the raised portion being from the walnut. I just used regular type bond glue to attach these and press them. In fact, I glued two at a time Put the glue on both sides, sandwich them together with a layer of paper towels in between just in case there's a little glue squeeze out, and then just clamp the heck out of this thing overnight. And when it's all said and done, you got a pretty good bond there. So the real unknown is how this thing is going to handle at the router table. I've got a brand new bit. It's a big fat Eagle America bit. They make good stuff. So I'm hoping it's going to be sharp enough to last me through all these. And I'm going to be taking these cuts. I'm not really going to be you know, jamming this thing in there. I'm going to take it a little bit at a time and more work my way up to the point that the full raised panel is shaped and looks good. Uh, this walnut that's on here was very specially selected for this. I had to stabilize it with some epoxy and CA glue. Um, absolutely gorgeous when there's finish on it. It's going to look amazing. I just have to be careful that I don't destroy it with the router. So uh, let me show you the setup over here. So what I've got here is a full raised panel bit and all I did was remove the back cutter. I don't really need the back cutter because my panels are going to be thin and once the raised panel cut is made, I should be left with a quarter inch lip here, uh, which is the perfect size for the groove in my door frame. So if I had the back cutter on there, that's really for thicker material that would also cut a little groove into the back, still giving me a quarter inch lip, but it would be just more material than I really need for this particular uh, setup. So I just removed everything. Uh, this bottom portion is just part of the shaft, so there's no need to have any sort of bearing or nut on there. And I'm gonna use my fence here as the guide. And before I start her up, I just want to show you what the setup is going to consist of. I've got a miter gauge here so that when I make the cross grain cuts, I'm nice and safe. The long grain cuts I can make just using my push paddles. Uh, a couple other things I want to mention here. When you make the cut cross grain, there's a real good chance you're going to get tear out someplace over here. If you are going to get tear out, the likelihood is it's going to be during the cross cuts. So it's nice if you could run cross grain first turn it left 90 degrees, then run it this way, then do this cross grain. Now see, each time I turn it after doing the cross grain cut, the next cut removes any of that tear out. So just as a general strategy, you always wanna hit that end grain first and turn it each way. And this way I'm going counterclockwise with each turn. Also, this bit is huge. Look at the size of that. The more meat on this bit, the slower that bit needs to run. Otherwise, you know, you could very well have a disaster on your hands. So what I'm going to do is set my router for the lowest speed.
I've done all six of my panels, and just to show you the strategy, I already have my quarter inch lip here, so the bit is as high as it's gonna go. So all I need to do now is in slow increments, just keep moving the fence back, exposing more and more of the bit until I'm at pretty much where I need to be. Uh, I don't wanna go too much you know, past where this cutter head ends. Uh, so as soon as the profile starts cutting into that walnut, we're pretty much there. So I think I lucked out. I mean, despite having some materials here that are notorious for being problems when you're routing, things like bird's eye maple, those little eyes, they tend to pop out sometimes. Uh, this is a relatively weak area on a piece like this, for instance, uh, also would be notorious for just blowing out and you gotta be real careful with it. But we lucked out, all six panels came out really nice and let me show you how it's gonna look on the final piece here. All right, so check it out. Now these panels are going to make a major statement for this piece and that was actually something that the client wanted. So I was able to find this piece of walnut here that had this really just gnarly looking bark. Um, and once this gets finished on it, you'll see it's actually very splotchy. And it's kind of something that normally this would be firewood. But I thought if I could somehow stabilize this and get it mounted to the bird's eye panel, I would actually have a really cool looking product out of it. So in fact, this particular area here, this just real soft, punky sort of wood that was here, I stabilized it and I was able to cut that board in half and do a book match. So these were actually all cut from the same piece and they're sequential. And I just basically cut them into, uh, into six pieces this way. And you can see the pattern is uh, close to a mirror image. You gotta consider through the thickness of a piece of wood, something like this is not gonna stay consistent all the way through its thickness. So what looks nice and wide here actually thinned out quite a bit by the time I got to this piece. But the pattern is pretty outspoken. It's going to be really just eye-catching, and that's exactly what the client wanted. So I think this is a, a pretty good success here. I'm happy with this. So that's all I have for you today. Hopefully you see at this point that even a piece of wood that at first glance just looks like it's junky and, and is really good for nothing but fire or smoking meat in my case, um, you know, there could be a beauty locked behind the surface there, something that really can make your next piece stand out. I mean, really, if you think of woodworking as an art form and you think of what our palette is and what our materials are, you know, if we were painters, the wood would be our paint. It's our way of expressing and doing something interesting. So it doesn't have to just be walnut, maple, cherry, you know, straight and uh, straightforward and simple woods. It can be really wacky looking things. Let the wood itself bring an element of something interesting to your projects. And even if it's just as simple as grain direction, we talk about that all the time. It's very important to paint with grain direction and paint with the color of the wood. And when you find something like this, that's a gem. That is not something to throw away. So hopefully you'll be able to incorporate stuff like this into your projects. Thanks for watching. You know, it occurred to me recently that since so many people don't actually watch our show on the website, they might not know about the Wood Whisperer store. And we have a lot of things with our logo. We slap my face on everything. I mean, really, who doesn't want my face on their chest? So we have t-shirts, we've got hats, we've got mugs, we've got travel mugs. I've even got these little push sticks that I've had custom made recently. I designed the handle myself so that it's uh, something that's really, really super comfortable. Got our logo laser engraved right in the front there. Very cool. Uh, the other thing we have there is our most popular seller is my DVD. It's a simple varnish finish. So anybody who's struggling with finishing and you just want a, uh, you know, basically the silver bullet kind of finish, this is what I recommend and I go through the entire process in this DVD. Now I'll tell you, my parents are very cool about all this. They do all the shipping, the packing, and everything pertaining to orders at the Wood Whisperer store. So I have them to thank for it, uh, but frankly they're getting bored. So I'd like to keep them busy. So if you wouldn't mind helping me keep my parents busy and giving them something to do, go to uh, shop.thewoodwhisperer.com and check out some of the cool stuff we have there. Thanks.